This video is on chemical formulas and what kind of information you can gather with just a chemical formula. Let's start with an easy formula, water. Um, H2O is the chemical formula for water. Most people know that this is water and um, let's look at what information we can gather from it. A chemical formula is a short way to write a substance that shows what that substance contains, what elements, and how many of each element. For example, H2O has an H and an O in it. So we know for sure that it contains hydrogen and it contains oxygen. All right? However, the next thing that a chemical formula contains are little numbers. So this little guy right here is called a subscript. He is a little bit below the letter next to him and that means something. It, it means he's a part of that. It does tell you how many atoms of that thing, of that element you have and it belongs to the one on the left. So the little numbers called subscripts belong to the elements written to their left. So pay close attention to that. So this guy has two atoms. So what that means is there are two atoms of hydrogen in water. Okay. However, look at oxygen. Oxygen has no little number right here. Um, when no number is indicated, it's an imaginary one. And I say imaginary because... Why would we write it if we had zero? We don't have zero, we actually have one. But they're not going to write that one. When they only have one of them, it is uh, an imaginary one. Feel free to write in the ones if that helps you, but I'm telling you when there's no number present next to a element symbol, it means there's just one of them. So for oxygen, it means there is one atom of oxygen. And this was an easy one. This is all the information you can gather by just looking at a chemical formula for H2O. Two atoms of hydrogen, one atom of oxygen. You can see that the symbols there, um, they tell you what elements there are. Let's look at another one. Okay, this new formula is the formula for table salt. It's what you put on french fries and potato chips. So salt has, again, two elements in it. I see Na and Cl. Now I'm going to tell you guys, you're going to see a C in what looks like a stick, and a lot of kids assume it's an I. In eighth grade science, we don't ever really talk about iodine. And if we're going to draw iodine, it's going to be a capital I. It would have the little bridges that go across the top and the bottom, but this is Cl. So knowing these two elements, you should know that Na is sodium. I like writing the name of the element out. And then Cl is chlorine okay but if you look carefully there is no subscripts next to either of them neither one of them has a subscript so what does that mean that means that neither one of them um, has multiple it's just one atom of each of those so you can go ahead and write in the imaginary one if it makes you uh, remember the count, but that means there is one atom of sodium. Now, I'm not always going to write one atom of sodium. Sometimes I just write sodium equals one atom. It, I'm trying to get you guys to understand the one atom is of sodium. The next one is chlorine. There was no number, so when there's no number, it would be one atom of chlorine. Please note that if you ever see an element and it has the two letters, you got to make sure you look at your symbols. Let's look at a little harder one that students often get confused. So this guy right here, this is carbon dioxide. This is what you exhale. Um, every time you uh, take a breath in and you exhale out, you're exhaling carbon dioxide. It's also what BB guns work on and you know some, any of the compressed air things. Um, now, a lot of students will look on the periodic table, and they'll see another element that's this. Okay, that's cobalt. 
cobalt and CO2 are not the same thing. Look, I actually have on here two capital letters. There's a capital and a little lowercase right there. That means this is cobalt. The lowercase tells you. Remember, in periodic table of elements, the symbols are written with a capital first and a lowercase second. I just wanted you guys to uh, see what an element could uh, look like. If it's a, it's a tough one. This one can get confused a lot, so don't get confused with it, all right? So let's uh, go ahead and count the elements. Uh, there are two elements here. Easy one. There's carbon. That's pretty easy to see. Get it? The joke, see? Anyways, so the next one is oxygen. Okay, now we got to count how many of each element there are. Um, to do that, remember, looking for the subscripts. You're going to look for the subscripts. And if we see any subscripts, that tells us how many there are. C has no little subscript. So remember, it's an imaginary one. So that means there's one atom of carbon. The next one would be oxygen. Oxygen does have a subscript. So it's definitely telling you there is more than one. That means there are two atoms of, car of oxygen. Okay. Now, eventually, we're going to get to the point where I'm going to actually ask everybody to tell me how many total atoms are in this formula for, uh, for CO2. And, and it's as easy as just, you know, you draw a line, there's one there, there's two there. That means there's three atoms total. Okay? We're going to get to that point, but we're not there yet. Okay. So, this one's a beast. It's a little bit longer. What you see here is a little bit longer formula, and it does contain multiple elements. If you look, there are and I'm already seeing they all have subscripts. These are some organic compounds. This is glucose. You should remember this from seventh grade. Now, glucose definitely has carbon. Next element, hydrogen. And the third element, oxygen. Okay. Um, once we have this step and we've identified well, what elements are in it, let's do the next step. And the next step is um, just identifying um, what or how many atoms of each element there are. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, there are six carbons. So I'm going to go ahead and write that. Six atoms of carbon. There are 12 hydrogens. 12 atoms of hydrogen. And then there are six atoms of oxygen. And I'm done. I've told uh, you how many of each atom of each element there are. Now, if I asked you how many total atoms, it'd be as simple as adding them all up. 6 plus 12 plus 6 is 24 atoms total. That's how many total atoms make up the formula for glucose. I hope this video helps. I'm going to try to post it on my website as well. If you have any questions, please contact your teacher. Thank you.